Amen. Good afternoon, church. Let me extend my condolences also to the family of Sister Williams. Sister Williams, <laughs> she had a sense of humor. She loved to laugh. <laughs> when I come to church and when I'm here and she, she like when I wear red, you know, have on my gray suit and I wear a red shirt. She said, Pastor, you look the best ever. I said, what happened to the other days? When I have on a, a yellow or a green, she said, no, the red fits you just right. <laughs> you talk about fish, when she goes to Anguilla and even when she, the way she will join on the service online and I would say, make sure that you bring some fish for me when you're coming. We would laugh about it, you know, all the time and she would say, well, Pastor, you know, I'll do the best I can. It just... Was it yesterday or a day ago or so I was home and my wife called me and there were some fish there. I said, that can't be for me, this eh? <laughs> And so Sister Gladys, so her mom would have sent some fish because she know I love the fish from Anguilla. I don't know what's going on the fish from Anguilla, but I look forward to getting my portion. We're definitely gonna miss her. She, again, one of those persons that were very reliable at church. She will. It was said that she would huddle along the road and you know she have a little cane but she will still come yeah. and i thank the lord for her faithfulness and that's what is required today yes. lord help me this afternoon I'd like to acknowledge our parliament representative of course and thank you for being here mr Conway. thank you for your presence and also ambassador sam condo members of the clergy of course our jobs are cut out for us these days as i ponder my thoughts throughout the night and roll over a couple of times <laughs> what do you say to a family that is in mourning but at the same time a country that is in distress what do you say as i ponder and i ponder so Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. I went to the book of Psalm and I come across chapter 42. And David, the psalmist, who offer hope in times of distress, whether it is a person of a relative or a nation in crisis, is the same message applies today. Hope thou in God. So carefully this afternoon. Irrespective of how you feel about those who we vote for, let me say to you this afternoon that hope is only in Jesus this afternoon. Boy, I'm telling you, if our leaders will recognize that they too don't have the answers, my friend, because if they did, we wouldn't be in this mess today. I'm not asking you and I'm telling you. Our leaders have to fall in their faces just like me and you and acknowledge before God we need your help. That's what we need today, my friend. Not that I have the answer because I don't. That's the truth. We have lost our way, friend. We have lost our way. But with God, thank God that he's a God of a second chance and a third chance. So even after we'd have lost our way, we can still make our way back. God will accept us. It was the psalmist who found himself in distress. And as he reflected on his life, oh my, he said, hope thou. Family, this afternoon I said to you, hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him. Irrespective of the situation we find ourselves in, there is always hope in God. It's something about hope that gives us that push to continue to live. 
What is life, friend? Think about it for a minute. Without any hope, we are seeing crisis in our country. We have young men who has no hope. Young man who has no purpose in life. And so they do what they do because they don't have no purpose. I'll be honest with you, friend, that the church has to take some of the blame for it. Not all, eh? But I believe the church has to take some blame. And I come into the home and I may reach there. But I believe the church has to take some blame for it. You know why? Because church has become an entertainment place. Church has become a place where you go to get entertained. Yes. Not preaching of the word anymore. To convict people of their condition before God. Hallelujah. Church has become a circus for some people. Where clowns go and jump up and run around. And go out worse than when they came in. Where are the messages that bring conviction to the hearts of people? This is a hard issue, you know. This is not a political issue we're dealing with. This is the condition of the heart, friend. But the scripture says the heart is deceitful. And above all things, desperately wicked. Folks, we are seeing. We are now seeing the manifestation of a life away from God. When man is away from God, my friend, the sky is the limit. What they will do? We are seeing that today, brother. We are reaping the seeds that were sown. Oh, yes. And boy, they don't look good. If you are not concerned, something is wrong with you. We all have to be concerned, friend. Yes, yes. We all have to be concerned. Amen. Where would the saying is that we knew? Where is that? It's a hard condition. And so as David ponder his thoughts, I want to share a couple of things with you this afternoon. Don't lose hope because God is still on the throne. Amen. Hey. Amen. That's the only hope I have. Yes. Today, we are going up for teenagers and teenagers who the scripture says, and there arose a generation that knew not God. Friend, it's scary. When you have a generation that don't know God, it's scary, friend. It's scary. That's the time we are living in. That to kill and to steal and to rob becomes a way of life. In St. Kitts, really? As I ponder my thoughts throughout the night, I wrestled throughout the night and I said, Lord, this doesn't make no sense. And I'm sure you would have had the same thoughts. It doesn't make sense. But it continues to happen. But it doesn't make sense. It makes sense to them. Yes, yes. And as David pondered, he thought, so I did as well. And David came to the conclusion that the only hope that man has in this life, and as a matter of fact, as I preached a couple of Sundays ago, I said to the congregation that the greatest need of mankind is not money, friend. It's not the material things that people killing each other about. The greatest need of mankind is not to run around and have a lot of girls and, and make children every corner of St. Kitts. And then everybody said to you, why are you the man, brother? You're a fool. That's why the scripture we call you. But for society, you are the man. The greatest need of mankind is salvation. Man needs to be saved. And if we don't get hold of these young men and their heart and show them that there is hope, we're in for trouble, my friend. You could have an eight-point plan. A ten, if you want to add some more to it. And a fifteen. You could bring in all the army from the different Caribbean islands, and you could bring in the SWAT from the U.S. The problem is not the police, my friend. The problem is the heart of man. And if we don't change, the Lord don't come and change the heart of people, 
this situation will never change, my friend. And so David, when he was facing his time of distress, he reflected, listen to me, country, listen to me, family, that in times of distress and trials and difficulty, it's time to look to God. God ain't a fool, you know, friend. God ain't a fool. For the Bible says, be not deceived, for God is not mine. For whatsoever a man soweth, oh my. And so what we are weeping now is because we would have sown them. Don't be fooled, friend. God ain't a fool. For me personally, I am troubled. To see that I have a daughter growing up now and you have little children growing up, to see the kind of world they have to grow up into. Ain't that scary? Yes. That when you send them to school, you don't know if they're going to come back? You don't know back in the day, you, you know, you don't, those are things you never worried about. But now you're concerned. Because when you send them off, you're home praying and say, Lord, protect them. Lord, would you just watch over them? Keep them safe, Lord. Let them come back home today. And that's a daily thing now. It's a daily thing. The distress that we are finding ourselves in as a country and as individual, it's a real thing, friend. Don't make no mistake, it's real. You know, sometimes when it don't happen to you and happen to your family, you think it's a joke. Oh, it happened to so-and-so, it ain't going to happen to me. Oh, it happened to my friend over there, but it ain't gonna happen to me. But when he comes home, when we realize that this thing is a real thing, we need to wise up. The psalmist in his wisdom offers some thoughts I want to share with you and then we are done for the day. He says, whenever you find yourself in distress, whether individually whether it's a person of a loved one, our country that we are skyrocketing in different areas that we don't really care to. He said, remember that there is always hope for those who are alive. Since the many time already passed. I go to funerals and I listen carefully for the message because I'm concerned. We have folks who come to funerals who think funeral is some kind of party. They lie around the baseline and they drink and they smoke. They have a blast. They ain't care to hear the message. Hold on, friend. Hold on. Your time will come. For the Bible said to everything, there is a season. And not only a season, but a time that God attached to the season. Making, making, making sure that you recognize that you're not going to be here forever. And God created in times and season a purpose. And so when you don't find your purpose in life, you walk around and you plan evil. You plan to kill. But guess what? You may run from the police, friend. You may run from the detective. You might be able to sneak through and say, well, they can't find me. But let me tell you something. God's eyes are still watching. And while you might get away from the police, my friend, God is still watching. And he knows. And he sees all. Just in case you think you got away. The Bible says, vengeance is mine. I sometimes wonder. They think they got away, you know. They say, boy, kill a couple of fellas they don't know who it is. Yeah. That's what you think. But God knows. God has a way of bringing up the truth to the surface. Because truth is a floater. You can't suppress truth, man. It will come up eventually. The Bible says, even though, my friend, God has grace that he extends. Every time, Lord, we make a choice to kill, while God forgives sin, friend, you have to deal with the consequences. God don't forgive sin in them. But better believe it. You have to deal with the consequences of your sin. And so why those are running around think, boy, we are good? They don't know. God knows. That's the confidence I have. 
can't run from God, friend. Never. They need to hear that. Never. Why you think you're doing things and nobody can't see you? <laughs> Hold on, friend. God sees all. Boy, that's scary, yeah? Because he knows where you are right now. When you think you're in hiding, God will reveal in time to come. Better believe that. And so he said to us, recognize that there is hope, but there is hope only in God. When the psalmist recognized that, boy, I tell you, that's exciting. Because then the hope that he recognized we have in God gives me a reason to continue to live. Because without him, friend, there is no hope. For the Bible says only in this life you have hope. You have all men most miserable. I want to encourage you this afternoon. Don't put your hope in man. Hello. I know some of you are going to stay with me today. Some of you love your people. But let me tell you something. Man will fail. And continue to fail. Don't put your hope in man, friend. Don't bother with what they say. Make sure that your priority is God. God. Man. God. Man. Not man, then God. I said to our people that there are many who only likes the benefits of God. Don't want to serve him. They want the benefits. Pastor, what can we get for coming to church? Um, what are the benefits? Um, well, you know, Pastor, I'm not a member, but what courtesy is extended to me? Let's say uh, something happened and we just want the benefits that God can give. Pastor, can you pray for my, my, my son? He said, Okay, you pray and God heal him. Pastor, can you? Pastor, can you? But when it comes to serving God, we don't want to serve, but we want all the benefits that come today. Yes, we remember there's a church. Remember there's pastor when things are not good. Call pastor. He will fix it. But when things are okay, pastor don't exist. Church don't exist. That's the time we are living in. And that's the truth. When we come, as I was saying, to funerals, we lay around the, the place and we play the fool. We don't want to hear what God says. As a matter of fact, Romans chapter 1 spoke about that. He said, when the new God, the glorified not as God, but became vain, the imagination. And the Bible said, and God turned him over to a reprobate mind. You know what's a reprobate mind? To do things that seem unseemly. That's what we are looking at now, you know. The minds of man. And only God can help us. That's fine. Mark my words, friend. The truth, the truth. No money can help you. You say, well, Pastor, if I get some money, I'm going to be good. I'm going to buy up some things and, you know, put security cameras on my building and put in burglar bags, as you can see right here. And then what? And then what? That going to change the heart of man? Don't hope in man, friend. Don't hope in material things either. Boy, I'm telling you, today it seems as though we have become a selfish people. We have lost our way. We have gone far away from what we used to do. We have become a selfish people because everybody wants to hold everything for themselves. Very few people you would see giving and trying to help today. The most people are trying to hold on to things as though they're going somewhere with it. You ain't going away with it, friend. And so we kill over things. Sometimes just a couple of dollars the man had. And you rob him and then you realize only fifty dollars. You kill the man for fifty dollars. And then we have families who fight and fuss about land and, and money and who get this and who get that. Friend, let me say to you. If your hope is in material things, you're in trouble. Years ago, my mom will, will tell you, she don't mind me sharing that, after she would have taken, taken care of her, her, her mom for all them years, and she had a little house there that was left for her, and they decided that my mom ain't going to get it, and they decided to take off the roof off the house. <laughs> I had to laugh. 
I said, Lord, help me. What is wrong with people? Material things. I said to my mom, Mom, you don't fight for those things. You know, because we ain't brought nothing in. Don't fight for those things. Leave it alone. Today she has her own. If you're hoping in those things, you're in trouble. Because this season looks like you'll be very hot in the hurricane section. And for those of you who have hope in that, hold on to it. Anchor yourself there. Tie yourself to the building. Because come what may, my friend the Bible said, naked came I into this world. And when the time comes, boy, if you get a suit, be happy. Sister Minnie looking all good and dressed up. I'm happy for that. But if you get the bird suit, be happy. Because the Bible said, naked came I. And when the time comes, my friend, you ain't taking nothing with you. Don't put your hope in material things. Can I say to you this afternoon, friend, hope thou in God. Because of what God can do. There's nothing impossible with God. And so when others are running after things and popularity and, and lights like the generation we are living in, they post things and they, they want to know how much likes that. But I have a hundred likes, what I mean I'm popular. And people now are forcing themselves towards social media and, and looking at these things and saying, oh, it's all about me. No, friend, it's not. In what God can do. Man without God is what we are seeing today. A man who has a knowledge of God stops to think and try to help others. A man away from God, he robs and steals and kills. That's the enemy at work. That's the enemy. And so I want to remind you this afternoon, as long as we are facing trials, and we will, when let me say to you that these are not difficult times yet, you know. We are just on the precipice of seeing what the Bible spoke about. But there are those who doubt the Bible. Pastor, I don't believe the Bible. Pastor, holy men wrote the Bible. Pastor, there's a lot of contradiction in the Bible. Let me say to you, friend, those of you who are on that side of the fence, whether you doubt it, whether you don't believe it, it doesn't change the fact that it's true. All right. The last time I checked, that God's word needs no validation. He doesn't need you. And when, let me also add this while I'm at it. When God says something is wrong, it is wrong. The leaders could say it's right. The majority could say it's right. But if God says it's wrong, it's wrong. Likewise, when God says it's true, it is true. Everybody has to say it differently. And so the only hope we have is in Jesus and the word that he gave us. The Bible said this now, that in the last days, friend, and we are just on the precipice. Perilous times shall come. The Bible outlined for those of you who go to church, read it. So you shouldn't be caught off guard. Man shall be lovers of themselves. Are we living there now? Yes. Are man lovers of themselves? Yes. Really? Yes. Proud? Yes. Boasters? Yes. Disobedient to parents? Hello? Oh my God. Are we there yet? Yes, yes, yes. And you're wondering why we are seeing this mess. Tell us something. I personally believe there's a curse upon any person who disrespect the parents. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. If you can curse your mom and, some, and, and you live normal the rest of your life, the word of God is not right. But I can tell you, there's a curse upon that generation. Friend, as I close, may God help us to realize that the only hope that we have today is in Jesus. 
The songwriter was right when he says, My hope is built and nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. In, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground. If we live long enough, my friend, we'll recognize that what the Bible says, you will have to come to the conclusion that the Bible is true. Because the Bible says, as it's appointed unto man. You think man came up with that idea? No. Okay. Wants to die. But after. Yeah. Challenge some young people some day ago. I said to them, I said, live your life how you want, friend. You don't want to listen to God? That's fine. Live your life how you want because God will bring you into judgment. So that me, Pastor, God can't bring me into no judgment. <laughs> I smug. Because I say, you don't know who God is, friend. You don't know who God is. Because the little breath that you're taking, God just have to snatch that from you. Uh, give you a little headache and a cold and you realize, boy, God, that breath is important. When people talk foolishly like that, they don't know who God is. Thank God that he's a God of mercy. And that God is a God of grace. But guess what? His grace will not be extended forever. It comes a time, friend, that we will have to stand before God. Yes. What will your excuse be? This afternoon, I said to the family, hope thou in God, friend. I said to those who are here, it's part of our community and country. I said to you this afternoon, hope thou in God. That hope gives us that life to continue to move on. Because when hope is taken away, we don't have nothing else to live for. That's why people take their lives. They say, Pastor, ain't got nothing else to live for. I don't have no hope. Don't have any hope. But thank God that he is the reason why we continue to move forward. Friend, God's grace is still upon this country and I'm convinced. The day God grace is removed from this country. You think it's bad now? The day we talk about prayer warriors and those kind of things, let me say to you, the Bible says, it is of the Lord's mercy. It's not of the prayer warriors. It's of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Not because of the prayer warriors, because they are prayer warriors in all the different countries, I believe. But it's of the Lord's mercy. We are not conceived. Who wants to live in a St. Kitts that we are seeing now? Who wants to live there? I long, I long, friend. I long. And we have to play our part. The church, when they come to us, don't give them a feel good message. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Let them know their condition before God and they need God. Let them know that. They need God. Let them know. So when they leave here, they ponder their thoughts. Give them something to think about when they come in. Don't let them go back out the same way they came in. Otherwise, we would have failed them. We would have failed them. And today, as I said, we take some of the blame. Because I've been to churches and are still waiting to hear the gospel preach. We have our part to play as well. As long as the home that some of us and some of you are living in. Being a counselor gives me a good opportunity to speak on this matter. Closing now. Some of you that sell out of amens. Instead of owe oh me. Because some of you that say amen, but it's really owe oh me you should be saying. Because some of the parents that we, we know today, they don't have no backbone. They talk big, but then when the time comes, they say, no, 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 don't, don't, don't send him to Jesus, no, 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 he's a good kid, and he's this and he's that. That's the majority of homes today. We are very good in giving everybody else advice, how to run their home. We are master at that. When we come to our home now, our home is in a wreck. And... Not just the outside. I'm talking about Christian homes. I'm talking about the worldly. I'm talking about folks who say they are Christian. Home is a mess. I've been there. And then we're trying to figure out what's going on. 
He started home, friend. You see, God didn't give the community no children. God didn't give the church no children. The children and the first institution God established the home. I like to challenge people, you know, because I make sure that my home is in order first before I begin to speak to other homes. My home has to be in order, friend. It takes away the power from preaching if my home is not in order. It makes no sense to get up here and preach if my home is not in order. Must have to be in order first. Otherwise, I will sit down, friend. I will sit down if my home is not in order. But at the end of the day, friend, what I'm trying to say to you this afternoon is that our country need us. Family, when we look at the situation we are living in today, we need God. That's all I'm saying. God's not a sideway thing. A sideway when I need help, I call on him. God should be integral in my life. That's what is lacking today. The fear of God. And when we in the church doesn't fear God, what happens to them out there? They think God is a joke. God ain't no joke, friend. It's a serious thing. Family, hope thou in God. Many of our young people used to come to church. They get too big now for church. Oh, pastor, he's too big now, you know. What a big, he's 13 years old. 14 years old. Oh, he don't want to come anymore, pastor. Hold on, you know, because those same seeds, friend, they're going to grow up. See those seeds here, they're growing up. Pastor, well, I can't get them to come to church. Where do they live? No, man. Impossible. Impossible. They can't live with you. Because I thought growing up, <laughs> the rule was, when mommy go to church, everybody go to church. <laughs> no, no, me ain't going today. 12 years old, telling me you ain't going to church today? Well, let me say something. We have become jelly. Our children have no concept of who God is. They have no fear for God. And so now we are seeing what the enemy would have done in their lives. But we shaking. We can't go back, you know, friend. Can't go back. But as I said to you earlier, I thank God that he's a God of a second chance. God will forgive. Parents, listen carefully. You might have some children. You better check in on them. No, pastor, they're doing okay. They're doing okay. You better check in on them. Because when we don't check in on them, guess what? They check in on us. Stop playing. Stop playing parent and be a parent. Some of you want to be friend, friend. What friend, friend? Parent first. Friend, friend. We want to dress alike. We want to look alike. And then they could tell us and talk to us how they feel like. Huh? What foolishness is that? Huh? I remember growing up, and I guess a lot of folks here from the community will vouch for me, that when we were growing up, you couldn't hang with the fellas. When you smile, you stay where you be. Small people business. Amen? Now you got these little ones right up in the conversation with mommy and daddy and everybody's conversation. And you're passing and you're seeing them and you just bother you because we don't understand what we are doing. When they get a little older, they start to curse you. Start to disrespect you and then you pretend like you don't know what's going on. I was up in the park some time ago and I don't go there to ask you now. I'm too excited to go there. And, um, a little boy they're misbehaving and parents said, Well you know you don't normally behave like that. Why are you why are you trying to embarrass me? The young lad said, Well mommy, why are you putting on a show? Why are you putting on a show? You know that's how it is. I feel hey my child, I feel so shame. And he was my kid. I feel so shame. That's what happens to you when you try to be friend with them. They embarrass you in the public. And so you better get back to the root of the matter. 
The Bible said train up. Train up. So they could have a knowledge of God. So their hope can be in God. Talking to a nephew of mine recently, he said, boy, young people, he said, Pastor, long, young people are going through a lot of things, you know. And sometimes we need a little something to help us to cope. I said, what is this something? Well, you know, I mean, um, you know, I take up a little spliff and uh, just, you know, smoke it once in a while to keep me calm and cool me down and so forth. And I reflected on our time when I was growing up. And even though it was not decriminalized, we find things in the community to keep us happy. I can't tell the last time I saw a top spin. Marbles, pitching. You remember those days? The alleys then were dirt, now the concrete. We used to occupy ourselves. What are you talking about, huh? And so we grew up because going to church and Sunday school was normal. We had a knowledge and a consciousness of God. That have far removed now. We can't even get them to come to church and they live in our houses. What do you expect to happen to our country? You better go home and do some house cleaning. You better go home and decide what you want to do because it's going to get worse, friend. If we don't give them that fear of God in them, and if those young men driving around think they're getting away with murder, don't have that fear of God, things will never change because the heart is what needs to change. Father, Thank you, just for the privilege to share a few thoughts. Lord, I spoke from my heart. My heart is burdened. Burdened for our country. Burdened for those who have lost loved ones, even Sister Millie. Lord, my heart is burdened to the point where, as a nation, the Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Blessed is the nation who God is the Lord. Father, my heart burns yes. for the needs of our country, for the families that have lost loved ones, even Sister Millie. Lord, we cry out to you, for you say, my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, shall pray, shall seek my face, and shall turn. Turn, Lord. Oh, how we need to turn. We need a turn. We need a shift, Lord. We need a shift. We need a turn. The Bible says only then we'll hear from heaven. And God keeps his promises. And he promised when we do that that he will heal our land. And oh, if there were ever a time that our land need healing, it's today. Father, we pray for your divine intervention. Lord, we know that even though those criminals think they got no way, they haven't got no way. For the all seen of God look everywhere. And he knows where they are, even at this time. Father, I pray for our nation. I pray for our leaders. Lord, I know it's a difficult time for them. But I pray that our leaders in return will look to you, that they will fall on their knees, Lord. And that they will cry out to you. And they will admit that Lord we don't have the answers. But you do Lord. And we need your help. We do Lord. We do need your help. Lord have mercy on us. As a country. We pray for the family of Sister Melissa. Lord we pray for strength. In this difficult time for them. In the weeks and the, and the months and the years to come. Where that void will need to be filled. Lord, we ask that you, Holy Spirit, will comfort them even those difficult times. We assure them, Lord, of your promise that you are ever present with them. Not just today, but you say you will never leave them, nor forsake us. Thank you for that hope that we have. And Lord, as we turn our attention now to the rest of the service, Father, just as you would have guided us thus far, we ask that you will take us through the rest of the service. And Lord, I pray that some heart this afternoon was challenged to make a change in their life, whether it's at home or in the community, to rise up and do something, not just stay silent anymore, 
that we will endeavor to pray more, that we'll find ourselves back to the altar again, yes, petitioning the throne of God, asking him for his help each and every day. Yes. And so into your hands we commit the rest of the service. Father, use it now for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen.